Kyle coming at you again today with another review. Today we're going to be talking about the Master Toe Car Dolly. If you like videos like these, these little reviews, please comment, subscribe, like, whatever you can do, I'm trying to build the channel up a little more. And you know, if I keep getting a lot of good feedback on these videos, I'll keep making them. I've had this uh, dolly about, I'd say about two weeks. In that amount of time, I've hauled, I think four cars with it. All of them have been, four door front wheel drive car. You could haul anything with it. I mean, even the truck that I pull it with an F-250, um, which is really like, mine's like really a heavy half F-150, will fit on this dolly. I've measured it. So I bought this a brand new about two weeks ago for a thousand bucks. Um, I believe a lot of people refer to this one as a master toe. Uh, I bought it at Leonard, which is like the place where you can buy the truck camper shells and bed liners and all those types of things. Uh, I think that this dolly is also for sale in the camping world. So the reason I chose this dolly is because it came complete. So as some of you may have noticed, Northern Tool sells a dolly for, I think it's like 1200 bucks shipped everything. Um, which is very similar to this but this one's cheaper than that um, I could go and pick it up the that day in person and it includes the straps for the tires which I don't believe the northern tool one does I think you have to buy those separate and the northern tool one comes in a box and you have to put it all together this one is completely assembled I have a warranty on it where I could just bring it right back to the place I bought it all that's good I haven't tried, I haven't really even seen anybody using the Northern Tool one. Um, so this is a pretty basic one. This is the lowest model. There's, I think, one or two higher models than this that you can buy. So this one is like $9.99, has no brakes. It's just the basic one. For $1,400, you can get the same exact dolly, but with the a, with a brakes. And I really didn't need that because one, I'm towing with a three-quarter ton truck, and my truck is really set up to haul trailers. It has really big brakes on it. Um, I mean, the brake, I think the brake rotors on that thing are like 15 inches, which is as big as a lot of car wheels, let alone the brake rotors. Um, so my truck can definitely adequately stop this with a load on it. And so I didn't really see the justification in spending the extra money. If I was trying to haul with a lot smaller of a truck or if I was trying to haul with like a little, like a car or an SUV or something, in those situations, I think the brakes would be necessary because a car that isn't designed to really have any load behind it is not gonna have the brakes to stop it. Um, so you would want the brakes on the dolly in that situation. Or if you plan on hauling super long distances with it through traffic or super big vehicles like if you're hauling a bunch of suburbans and stuff like that with it those are a lot heavier than most of what i haul um so in those situations i would consider getting the brakes if you can afford it so every tow dolly i've ever seen whether it's a u-haul dolly or these master tow dollies or whatever the ramps are attached to it you don't like take the ramps off or anything like that they stay right on the actual unit and the deck flips and i'll show you the deck flipping um and then the other thing is is the deck on this turns when you turn because essentially the uh 
this is like kind of like hauling two trailers. The dolly itself is a trailer, and then the car on the dolly is like another trailer. Because the axles are so far apart, it needs to turn so that, you're, so that it doesn't drag. <clears throat> now this thing doesn't turn a lot. As a matter of fact, I think it's pretty much maxed out right now, just sitting here. But this little, you know, if it's 10, 15 degrees, I'd be surprised. Really makes a big difference when you're talking about the distance of like a 15 foot car. That distance adds up and really helps with the turning radius. Um, I'm pretty sure every car dolly has that, but maybe some don't, I'm not sure. I've never seen one that didn't. Um, so yeah, there's that. And with the new dolly comes brand new wheels and everything. Um, new tires, all that. So all that was taken care of. I could have bought a dolly used on Craigslist. I'm sure anybody can, um, but I just didn't find any that were the right price. To make up for the the difference in price of a new one i mean these things get beat up real easy when they're not loaded they bounce like crazy um so if i went out and bought a dolly that was a couple years old and had a had a lot of cars on it um and i still paid six seven hundred dollars for it a good chance i would need to put tires on it and you know you think be two hundred dollars by the time i put tires on it so now we're already up to $900, and then it would still be a used dolly at the end of the day. The paint would be all scratched up, there'd be rust on it. Um, even this one, I've only hauled four cars on this thing, and I'm already losing paint. So I can only imagine one that's a couple years old, um, what the condition of the paint would be. And as a lot of you probably know, steel that isn't coated with some paint rusts like in a day. So like I can already see a little bit of surface rust starting in the places where the paint is scraped off. Like on this fender, I don't even know when this uh, scratch occurred, but as you can see, I've only had it two weeks, scratched the paint on the fender somehow, and it's already got a little bit of rust, surface rust starting. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and spray that. I'm gonna try and see if I can call up the company I bought it from, and get them to tell me what <laughs> where to get the paint that's the same color so I can just kind of protect it. I, don't, I want this thing to last a long time. It wasn't expensive, but it wasn't cheap. So this is my investment for... So the cons of having a dolly over a flat trailer is backing it up. Um, so some of the people that are layman's to driving with trailers would probably think, and I could understand how you could think it, that a shorter trailer is easier to back up. That is a fallacy. Um, honestly, a longer trailer, the further back your axles are, really is makes it easier to go in reverse with a trailer to an extent. That's why when you see tractor trailers, they always have the axles all the way in the back. That's partially to help it tow better, but it also makes it a lot easier to back up. Now, when you have a short trailer, um, what you run into is when you're backing it up, it will kind of, it'll jackknife really fast. What I mean by jackknife is where the trailer hooks up to the back of your truck, it'll start to go and turn and it'll get so close that your truck will run it over if you don't stop. And so with a short trailer, that happens super fast. Just the subtlest movement and just a couple of feet and that thing will jackknife. Um, the other thing is, is it's super hard to see in your mirrors when you're backing it up. Um, so yeah, a short trailer is definitely harder to back up. So empty, you can back this up. I backed it up several times in the people's driveways to pick up these cars and it can be done, um, but it's not easy. Loaded, you can absolutely not back this up. It actually has a warning on the tongue, and I'll show it to you right now. It says, right here, do not back this unit. Meaning, because of the fact that the de this deck turns when the car is on, if you start to back it up, you're basically backing up two trailers at once, and you have absolutely no control, because your movements in the steering wheel are going to control the dolly but then the dolly has another trailer on that and that's gonna kind of do the opposite effect to the car that's on it and really fast 
this will jackknife because it can only move a few degrees before you're stuffing the door into the fenders of the dolly. You cannot back this up. If you buy this and you put a car on it, do not put yourself in a situation where you need to back it up. It cannot be done. I'm sure it can be done, and I've seen a video where somebody did it, but it's not like something you can go and back up very far. I mean, we're talking about like a foot, and that's if you're really good at backing it up. Just don't do it, please. Please do not ruin your dolly or your car trying to back this up. So yeah, that's like the biggest con about this dolly, I think, is I can't back it up. Another con is really, okay, if you have a front wheel drive car that you're trying to haul with this all day long, super easy, not a problem, just as easy as, probably easier than loading it on a flat trailer. You start looking at pickup trucks and all wheel drive stuff, and you run into an issue because if your vehicle is rear wheel drive and automatic as most are you cannot just stick it in neutral and haul it down the road you can't but it'll do damage to the transmission because the transmission especially in an automatic needs to have lubrication in order to keep it from getting damaged while the drive shaft is turning so if you have a pickup truck like mine and you want to haul it on this you gotta drive it up onto the dolly and then you gotta lay underneath it and take the drive shaft out of it. Which isn't like the end of the world, but it is an extra step that you would never have to do on a car trailer. If you have an all wheel drive vehicle, it's the same story, but the problem with the all wheel drive vehicles is if you have something like a Subaru or an Audi, you can't just drop the drive shaft in. There's actually like, the exhaust is in the way and I think there's even a heat shield between the exhaust and the, and the rear axle. You know, so in the drive shaft and all that. So that is pretty difficult to go and drop the drive shaft in. And you literally, in an all-wheel drive vehicle, the rear and the front wheels always have a, a mechanical connection. So it'll cause serious damage to it if you just put it in neutral and try and haul it. And this isn't a, a you know, a self-loader wheel lift. This is a dolly. You can't go and put the car on this backwards. I mean, I'm sure you could, but it's not something I would suggest because if the steering wheel goes and turns while you got that thing on there backwards, that this whole thing is gonna go awry. When that happens on something like a tow truck with a wheel lift, it's not a big deal because it doesn't have anything to hit. The driver can just pull over try and put the steering wheel straight and lock the steering wheel somehow. It's not the end of the world. It isn't gonna really hit anything and he'll probably, and he's experienced and he knows when it's happening. If you put a car on this dolly backwards and it happens, just like when I was talking about stuffing the door into the fender on it, if that wheel does decide to turn, you know, it's gonna happen fast and it doesn't have very far it can turn before it's gonna do damage to your dolly. Really can't take anything backwards on this thing. So, yeah. So it's really up to you, you know, I'm, it depends on your use for the dolly, um, what, what kind of cars you're hauling, what you're using to haul it, um, and how far you gotta go. So for my situation, um, just trying to do this on a budget, and maybe two or three cars a week with it and most of the cars I buy are front wheel drive you know little cars not a big deal once in a while I buy a truck and when I do I just drop the drive shaft in it it's not a big deal but I can never haul a Subaru or anything I have to pay to have that towed um, but even so when you figure in you know at 200 some odd dollars per tow depending on how far you're going because I do live pretty far away from town this dolly really pays for itself in like maybe five or six cars. So um, I've, I'm probably pretty close to being even on the money on this because I would I used to have to pay a company to tow my cars. Now I'm doing it myself. Um, it's pretty much right there, paid for itself. Plus I've saved myself all of that hassle of waiting for a tow truck, explaining to him where to go, having to pay him the cash or on all that jazz so there is a convenience factor to keep in mind so yeah I'm gonna go ahead um, 
show you a clip unloading this Jetta. I actually filmed this clip before I started talking to you about the dolly because the Jetta was already on here. Um, I can't get you a clip loading it because it doesn't run and I don't feel like winching this up. All right, so I got a car on and this is just your normal everyday Mark III Jetta. Um, so I just want to go over exactly how the this system works. <clears throat> so when you're hauling the car on the dolly, the car is primarily held in by these yellow straps over the tires. There's one on each side. And as you can see, the ratchet is permanently attached to the dolly. You tighten the ratchet with a inch and an eighth wrench. Um, so you have a lot of leverage on it and this thing can strap this just as tight as any tow truck. <clears throat> so that's your primary way to actually hold the car to the dolly. There's also safety chains bolted to the dolly that you just hook up onto the car. And these chains are here in case something happens and one of these straps or both of these straps let go, the car will never actually roll all the way off the dolly. Um, you can see I actually have the chains pretty loose. I've never had the straps come loose, but this chain isn't that long. So even if the car came off, I would definitely feel it in the truck because that'd be a pretty big uh, weight shift. And it would just roll to somewhere on these ramps and then I could just pull over and reattach it safely but these ramps are always attached to the dolly and the way that it works is the whole deck is on a hinge so you take off this this just loosens up and you slide this square bracket forward and then there's a safety pin here on the bottom you take that out and when the car is on it the deck of it is going to be forward but as soon as the weight of the car shifts back a little bit, the deck actually tips automatically just by the force of gravity and the ramps will be down. There's no moving ramps around. There's no nothing. You just roll the car straight back off it. And then um, when, you're, when it's empty and you want to put the deck back down to drive down the street again, you just step on the front of it and it's so light that the weight of your body will actually flip it forward. And then once it's forward, just stick your pin back in, put this square bracket on. And then as far as the way that it's attached to the truck, it's just like any other trailer. It uses a two inch ball, has a couple safety chains. And then we got a, uh, we got the trailer lighting. So this dolly actually has lights attached to it. I've seen some dollies that do not have lights. Um, not really, you know, you can take it or leave it with the lights. I mean, it's just the way that I bought this particular one. Um, I still use magnetic lights that you can buy at Harbor Freight on the car. And the reason for this is just so if I'm hauling a car that doesn't have a good battery in it and I can't put on the four ways, um, people behind me will, you know, know that there's a car here especially at night with a black car. Um, if I didn't have the four wheels on, it'd be very difficult for other drivers to know where the end of this whole contraption is. Um, and furthermore, it's nicer to actually have your brakes light up and your turn signals light up at the back where everybody can see it. And I have two trailer plugs on my truck, so I leave both of them plugged in when I'm going down the road. So I have the lights from the dolly up here because the dolly is wider than your load and I have the lights in the back so nobody will hit it so now I'm gonna go ahead and unload this for you guys so you can see how it goes start off by unhooking our safety chains which is super important because if you forget those and you unhook every other thing this will be not good a fiasco. Next, just get our straps ready to 
be unfurled here. Now whenever I have a little bit of extra strap to avoid fraying the end of it, I always wrap it up so it doesn't drag on the road. So, but to get these straps off the tires, you gotta completely unfurl it. So, if there's pressure on the strap, the way to get it off is you lift up on it so it's off this lock, and then you push this in, which unlocks it, and then you let it go. So now the strap is loose, and you just spin it by hand. Get it so that there's no wraps around it, just like any other ratchet strap. Pull it right out. We'll lift it right off the tire. thing is to unlock the deck. So just spin that counterclockwise, loosen it, pull it forward, pull out this pin. The deck is now unlocked. So I can roll the car off. unloaded as you saw the deck flipped on its own just from gravity now that it's unloaded if I wanted to take off with this all I gotta do is step in the deck flips forward I start with this square piece and I just tighten that up which makes sure that the deck is all the way forward and I take my safety pin slide it through the bottom 